I gotta say, I think I'm a little bit. It. I. I gotta be honest. I'm. I am known for a couple of hot takes in my time. I have my hot takes, you know. But uh, uh, I, I gotta be honest. Th there's a level of sisters copium that apparently I've been huffing. Um, I. I. I thought it looked pretty all right. I, I thought it looked okay, but I guess it didn't to many people. Um. But uh, there's there's been a lot of copium yesterday, or, or a lot of uh, more like doomsaying, I guess, right? Uh, Ad mech especially seems like they're one of the big ones. But um, I must say, after looking this over a little bit already, uh, I think you Necron guys, your copium was a little misplaced. No, your doomsaying was a little misplaced. Screw it, whatever. I don't. I, that, that doesn't matter. Let, let's just talk about the the crons. Um, so it, I've uh, I'm gonna do this a little differently than before. Before I was just kind of looking over the entire thing all the time. Uh, you know, full full sail wholesale. Uh, I've already looked through it a bit, and I'd like to instead kind of highlight the important and the interesting things more than talking about like just going through the whole stuff. So I'm probably not going to talk a lot about keywords or um, any kind of toughness wound stuff unless it pertains to the thing itself. Uh, but I was looking through the cron stuff, and yeah, I got to be honest, guys. You're, do I mean, I don't know what came over you Necron players, okay? I, I can't believe you've turned into the whiny faction. I'm shocked. I, th I, w I was so much happier when it was the Eldar and the Tau. I cannot believe you have become the whiny group. Like, you're the Necrons for God's sake. Come on now. You are the undead legions of, like, old men leading soulless, like, zombies. You should just... You should just have all kinds of spiteful iron warrior level confidence, but you're just like, oh, my warriors on fours. It's ridiculous. Um, that being said, Admech right now are giving you a run for your money. Uh, and I, I think your I think your whining has been for the most part extremely misplaced. Um, because from what I've been looking at, they're looking uh pretty spicy. So as we already know, reanimation protocols are a combination of living metal and the uh, reanimation. It's D3 wounds, uh, but those wounds will spill over into making new models. So it's not only healing characters and vehicles and the like, but you are also building up new dead units such as warriors, mortals, and so on. The command protocol is, granted, very boring. It is simply a plus one to the hit roll when a character is leading a unit. However, I must say some of these units are quite interesting and it makes more sense when we get there. Uh, as for your stratagems, there are actually a couple that are uh, fascinating. You have a character regeneration stratagem with have the number of wounds remaining. This is particularly interesting in certain situations. I will get to soon, particularly the fact that, um, oh, uh, I, I don't know. There's no restriction on the person you're reviving, except for infantry. So that's something to note. Uh, Hungry Void is one that we saw that was really, really good looking. It's a uh, plus one strength, and if his character is on it, plus one AP in melee. Uh, and then also the Conquering Tyrant is pretty nasty. Uh, it allows you to reroll the wound roll within half range or uh, just reroll the wound roll in shooting in general if you have a character on it, which is very good. Uh, Undying Legions is nice. It, it's worded kind of dumb, but basically it's you get to reanimate uh, your unit after your opponent shot you, uh, or you get an extra, you get D3 plus one if there's a character leading it. So it's a reactionary reanimation, basically. Um, Sudden Storm is, is uh, giving assault you know, to all the units and then rerolling advanced rolls with a character in it. Basically, we've noticed a lot of the stratagems are does thing, does thing better, does thing, does thing better, you know, murders you, but if you're corn, et cetera, et cetera. These are all if characters are leading your unit. Um, for example, here, this is a, a vengeful stars. This allows you to fire back at somebody. Um, but you ignore cover if the character's in it. So the stratagems are, are interesting. Um, some of them in particular, this regeneration one, which we'll talk about soon, is really nasty. Uh, but other than that, it's um, it's pretty, it's pretty for the most part, kind of cool to lead into the characters. Uh, as for the enhancements, these are somewhat decent. Uh, the four up feel no pain is very solid for a uh, tanky thing. I would say like a Scorpec Lord is really good with that one. Uh, I like the, uh, what is this? Um, 
the six inch counts as being led by a character. Because in a sense, this basically means you um, are, I mean, well, plus one to hit in a six inch aura and all the stratagems count for it too, which is pretty handy. Um, Hybrid Material Ablator is uh, is a bit all right. It gives them stealth um, and also gives them cover outside of 12. Actually, I forgot. It's it's cover outside 12. Yeah, this one's actually quite good. I'll probably take the Ablator very, very often. And then the Veil of Darkness is the, the classic once per battle, end of your opponent. It's, well, this one is at the end of your opponent's turn, so it's no instant drop them off kind of thing anymore, but it could be good to deploy, you know, slower units. Anywho. Uh, so we're going through this kind of stuff. I, we've seen a couple of these already um, or in other facets. Um, I'll go through some of the characters real quick. Uh, the Stormlord right here is um, uh, most Necron characters are T5, uh, which is very nice. Uh, I like that. Just, just It's just nice to have. Um, now, he it gives you a CP every command phase, um, which is your or your command phase, which is, I think, very good. Um, it's just CP is at a bit of a premium, and I like it a lot. Uh, I've also noticed that for the most part, the game's AP has gone down. And for the Necron characters, that really isn't the case. Um, their AP is is quite good pretty much across the board. They have they la uh, lack a lot of attacks, but their attacks are very strong. Um, like, for example, you know, Imatech has two weapons, a decent flamer and a solid staff with a the same staff in um, melee, both devastating wounds. Also, he has a, a very solid Lord of Storm ability, which is once per battle, you basically roll a D6 for every enemy unit within 12 of the model. And then on a 2, 3, 5, they take D3. On a 6, they take D3 plus 3. 12 of the model is quite large. Uh, it might seem kind of boring for Imitech, but as far as he goes, like 5 extra CP, let's face it, more like 3 to 4, depending on if he survives, um, is very good, but 12 inches. Now you designate basically a 24 inch zone and just everything within it takes uh, probably D3 mortals, possibly more. And I gotta be honest, I think that's a pretty good just bomb ability. Not to mention that his weapons are still pretty decent. Just runs up there and explodes and does a genuinely, a genuinely solid amount of mortals for the most part. I actually think it's quite decent. Um, and he can, and you'll notice this a lot. Most characters can run with Immortals, Warriors, and Lich Guard, which makes sense. Those are kind of the big three. So, uh, Orokin here, uh, well, he doesn't have T5, but he's a Chronomancer, so it's a little different. Uh, Orokin is fascinating. Orokin gives four up invuls to whoever he is with. Uh, and his Staff of Tomorrow is only two attacks at 4 3 D3 with devastating wounds. However, he has his once per battle. Ability that makes it so he triples his attacks and strength of the Staff of Tomorrow. And every single successful wound is a critical wound. So he rolls up with six attacks at strength 12. And if he wounds you, he does D3 mortals. It's actually pretty nasty. Uh, it's a pretty good once per game just bomb ability. Like, bam, I'm going to do a staggeringly large amount of mortals. Uh, I actually like it a lot. I think it's uh, pretty fun. I would have liked a little bit more than just the four up invul save, maybe throw on stealth in there as well. But Orokin will finally have a decent use as just a solid melee murderer at least once, um, especially with that AP too. I mean, even w outside the battle of the, the once per battle ability, it can be, you know, he's kind of whatever. But a four up invul is just really, really good especially with a blob of warriors because they already have a four up armor. So you're basically just always getting their save. Um, plus, you know, they're T4 and it's all right. Uh, but the more important thing to note is that since he is a, a crypt deck, you can attach him even if they already have a Royal Warden or a noble with them, uh, which I think that's actually a pretty useful and important like ability because one, he gets the four up invul. And then you can still give other kinds of decent buffs to help them out. Uh, so I like it. Uh, Onric here, the Traveler, however, feels very good. Um, War Scythes are looking excellent for the most part. They are Strength 8, AP 3, 2 damage, and they have Devastating Wounds, which is just a, a very solid profile. The Tachyon Arrow is Finally, actually pretty all right. It still won't one-shot a Titan like it does in lore, but D6 plus two, 
AP5, 16, you know, I'm okay with this. I, I, I'm fine with that. Um, but he gives plus one to wound when in in hits and like wound or um melee and shooting, which I think is a very solid uh rule. And he also has that wacky pick an enemy unit within 12, start your opponent's shooting phase, either minus one to hit them or they cannot hit at all, uh, which I think is a pretty good way to use mind of the machine. I, I do miss the take an opponent's weapon and shoot them with it. That was really, really fun, and I'm sad it's gone. Uh, but I, I get it. They, they, they're they consolidating a lot of these rules. Um, I think Onrik here... Now, unfortunately, he can only be rallied with Immortals, which is a bit of a restriction. But I'd say that plus one to the wound roll with that is very good. It also helps out his Tachyon Arrow a lot. And uh, actually, this has some some solid uses. I, I like I like Onrik here. I think he's... Uh, I think he's actually pretty fun. Um, Oberyn's pretty all right. He gives fights first, which is very cool. Um, he also has precision on his war scythe, which is also nice. And he gives a feel no pain to Zandrek, because of course he does. Um, so I like the fights first ability, of course. That's nice. Probably very good on Lich Garm. Uh, however, Zaraz has seen a glow up. I mean, Zaraz, I think, was already kind of decent. I kind of I kind of liked running him for the most part, but Zaraz is a guy. Oh, my God. So, T8, 2-up save, 9 wounds, 4-up invul. Already a... Also, don't forget the 4-up feel no pain. Staggeringly good profile. Excellent. Just, just really, really good. Um, not only does this make them him insanely tanky, but let's not forget that they're regenerating health every single command phase or your command phase. Um, the weapons are pretty good. The, the main gun has been nerfed a little bit. Um, it used to be D six damage. So it's three attacks at nine, three, three with 36 inch range, still pretty darn good. And in melee, it's the same profile with four attacks and then four extra attacks with the legs. So he hits for the most part, decently hard, but nothing like outlandish um the couple of parts here is i'm gonna go starting with this and then go to here mechanical augmentation while a necron's battle line unit which i believe is just warriors and immortals but you know i could be wrong um is within six inches of this model each time they make an attack improve the ap by one and each time they are hit by an attack reduce the ap by one so it is a six inch aura on a do with a big base mind you of plus one AP and minus uh, uh, and uh, minus one AP coming in. It's armor of contempt plus one AP. And if you kill anything in the fight phase, you add three inches to this ability to go to nine inch aura. And also you might be thinking, well, Bricky, he can be shot. Uh, while he's within three inches of other friendly Necron units, he gets lone operative. You are giving lone operative to a T8, two up, nine wounds, four up feel no pain, four up invul, reanimation character that isn't quite a slouch in combat and makes a substantial damage buff and health buff or, or a tankiness buff to this group. I, I gotta be honest. I think that Zeraz has had a fat glow up. I think that he is really worth taking, depending on points, as we always know. Um, so, yeah, I got to be honest. I'm really proud of him. Uh, really proud of how he's come out. Zandrek. Zandrek, my, my boy. We love we love our Zandrek. Um, he gets to roll with Transient Madness, which is a roll of D6 in the command phase until the next command phase. That unit gets either sustained hits one, lethal hits, or devastating wounds. And also, he has a Vect. Make the opponent spend an extra um, CP to use stratagems. I will say, I miss his old Vect. His old ability was, I'm going to use this stratagem. No. And that was it. Basically, you couldn't use that stratagem ever again the entire battle round. You kept your CP, but he just, no. You can't use that, and you can't use it for the rest of the battle round. It was really gross. And uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, cause you, it was any stratagem. I'd have people who would advance a unit and then be like, I'm going to use the advance and charge, uh, a stratagem. No. Like, so they're stuck there. Yes. It, it, it was lovely. It was hilarious. All right. Um, 
he he's all right. He doesn't have the same enjoyment that he had before, in my opinion. But uh, you know, rolling him up with um like immortals or sorry, Lich Guard, him and uh, where is Oberyn? Yeah, the two of them can run together with Lich Guard, giving them fight first. It's it's got some uh got some power there. Plus, you know, all of these are pretty good against um or with Lich Guard, so I like it. Trazen, oh Trazen. Uh, Trazen's interesting. So he his empathic obliterator has sustained hits D3, which is interesting. It's got a wacky profile, 7-0 D3. Um, and what he does for the most part is give you sticky objectives. Uh, if you're leading a unit, you take an objective marker, it remains under your control, which makes sense, you know, collector stuff. Uh, as for his surrogate hosts, he can go ahead and well, it says at the start of your command phase, this model is on the battlefield. You can select one other friendly Necron's infantry character, besides Epic Hero and Scorpex. The selected model is destroyed, and this model is put in its place with all of its wounds remaining. It is now attached to the unit as well. Now, this is normally not a, a very good idea because normally this is a thing you would want if you want Trazen to get to an area and make him important. Uh, however, there is a single use case for this which is if you notice it's at the start of your command phase and this is while this model is leading a unit at the end of your command phase so what you could do is blow up a character like okay i am now holding this objective uh in a prior turn or something um it's sticky like i have sticky this objective i am now going to blow up uh some shitty lord or whatever and send Trazen over there and now I now have sticky objectives for this objective, and then you can move him away. So in reality, I think you can use him to ping pong around the battlefield, making things sticky, uh, which can be really useful. Um, however, is it worth killing off a unit? Sometimes, but probably not often, like maybe 25% of the time. Um, between the Orkin and Trazen Combo, I'd say Orkin is the one that got the bigger glow up, uh, but I'd still say that Trazen has a use for the most part, um, just overall. All right, uh, Royal Warden seems pretty all right. His gun is actually pretty good, um, but he gives units uh, like heavy and assault, which is kind of neat. Adaptive strategy, you can just pick what, whichever one you like, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, and then you can do a uh, turn off battle shock, which is fine. Uh, I do like the warden for the assault or heavy. I think it's kind of nice. Um, however, you can't run them with other lords and stuff. So it's, it's just immortals and warriors. Uh, the Scorpec Lord seems kind of fun. Uh, he has four pretty nasty attacks or his sweet move, of course. Uh, his gun is fine for the most part, but he's pretty tanky. T7, six wounds, four up in vol. Uh, he gives lethal hits to melee weapons for the group, which I think is just Scorpex. Yep, Scorpex Destroyers. Uh, and uh, if you know, if he ends a charge move, he does a bunch of mortals, which are some mortals, which is fine. Uh, the Scorpex Lord didn't get a giant glow up for the most part. Uh, I think he's, uh, I think he's okay. Um, the Locust Lord is rather interesting. Uh, I need to double check a couple things, but the Locust Lord either has the Staff of Light to do damage, or he has the Lord's Blade, which is basically just a war scythe with devastating wounds. Um, the Locust Lorm is interesting because it has a couple options. You can give it the Phylactery for a Field of Pain. Uh, you can also give it a Res Orb, which is very good that we know what this does. The Res Orb lets you reanimate in both command phases, yours and your opponent's. I actually think this is a really good ability because for the most part, a lot of us are worried about... Um, you know, having our units fully destroyed. Uh, but basically, this allows you to, after your opponent has attacked you, reanimate twice. Because your opponent hurts you, you lose some guys, you reanimate, and then you do your turn, opponent's turn, and then you reanimate. Uh, I like the Resor, but for the most part, I think it's pretty good. It's also, I think, you know, with that one stratagem, you can kind of keep yourself alive for the most part, the best way you can. So I think it's interesting. Uh, you can re-roll the hit roll and the wound roll if you hurt someone below half strength, which is interesting. But you also get a five up scores of critical hit, whichever with whatever they're leading. They can only lead the locust destroyer, so I'm assuming their weapons have some kind of either sustained hits or lethal hits. So we'll see. Uh, the Lord gives plus one inch move because relentless march, and also you can do stratagems while they're battle shocked. 
it's fine. Um, though you also, again, it's the res orb. It's really the res orb. Uh, the Catacomb Command Barge is rather fascinating. Um, the Tesla Cannon, Gauss Cannon, all these things are obviously all options you can pick from. Uh, the Quantum Shielding is one of those weird things we're seeing now where it's minus one to wound if your strength is higher than their toughness. Basically, you're, for the most part, giving yourself transhuman, um, but if they're double, it's mini transhuman. So basically you know, tough or strength nine through 15 will wound you on fours. Um, I guess eight through 15 actually, but strength 16 will wound you on threes. It, it's fine enough. Um, they're not a leader though, unfortunately. A um, couple of things to note though. Uh, they do give a six inch aura of plus one OC, which I kind of like as an overall uh, power because they cannot be placed in a unit. They're not a leader, but they do have four up in both. T8, nine wounds, four up invul, reanimation, mini transhuman. It's not bad. Um, they do have a resurrection orb, though, and because they're not a leader, they actually get to pick one of six inches to do that reanimation ability, which I actually think is it gives you a bit more uh, flexibility for the most part. Um, all right. Uh, the regular Overlord, our guy here, Tachyon Arrow. It's here. Overlord's Blade is an option here. The Void Scythe actually hits pretty hard at 12-3-3 which is kind of neato. Um, besides that, however, they have minus one damage and they have my will be done. My will be done is the classic free stratagem in addition to the other stratagem. I think my will be done will be used for the most part for that automatic reanimation ability for D3 plus one uh, reanimation. And I can see it being used once and then used again in a different unit. I, I like that idea. I, I just think it'll be used the most defensively, but it could be used for other things as well. But uh, notice all of these uh, character infantry units I've been open. Wait. Is Zara's Is Zara's infantry? Oh, fuck, he is. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I found another reason why he's got to glow up. Imagine that. Imagine you finally bring down T8, two up save, nine wounds, four up interval, feel no pain, four up with lone operative. And next thing you know, one Necron's infantry character model from your army that was just destroyed. Set it back up with half of its starting wounds remaining. Half. So five, because normally you round up. Five wounds. Again. And then maybe, and then maybe you don't have enough to kill him after that. And then he ran and then he reanimates D3. Again, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's such a good strat. It's such a it's such a good strat. My God, uh, Technomancer. He gives five up feel no pain. Also, as we mentioned before, nobles and royal wardens will be pretty handy to uh, to have them mixed in. Uh, he runs with lich guards, necron warriors, so on and so forth. So five up feel no pain is pretty good. Also, he can regem D three lost wounds to a necron model. Just lost wounds. I don't think that in, that allows for like reanimation, reanimation. I think it's just wounds. Um, so like fixing a character or a vehicle. Uh, of course, uh, a Coptic Cloak gives him fly in lone operative and a move characteristic of 10, probably allows him to bounce around. And um, the control node gives him plus one to the hit roll for the Canoptic units within six inches around him, which is about what I remember. Um, the as, and as per the usual, the... Mansers of all kinds hit on fours because they're nerdy scientists. Uh, the Psychomancer is a nine-inch aura of minus one leadership, and then pick a unit within 18. Does need to take a bow shock test. Not that great, personally. I think it's kind of kind of mediocre. I, I don't know. I wouldn't really run him that much unless you really need to force battle shock. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, I think the Psychomancer is cool of a model as it is, just maybe it isn't worth running as much. Uh, the Chronomancer, I do like. He has a uh, some surprisingly decent anti-infantry gun, um, but also has a minus one to hit for the units within it, including in melee. Uh, and the Chronometron, 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 duh, uh, allows you to, if you're in the shooting phase, after this model's unit has shot, you then can move five inches. So it is a jump, shoot, jump ability, uh, which I think is actually pretty handy to have, especially with Necrons being such a slow army. Uh, then after that, you have the Psycho or Plasmancer, a personal favorite of mine. 
Uh, you get a critical hit of a five up while he's leading a unit, which is, I think, really, really good with warriors because they have lethal hits on their guns. So uh, that makes it very good. Also, you may pick a unit with an 18 invisible and roll a D6 for every single enemy model, and they take a mortal on a six, which is great against Horde and okay against everything else. Um, also, their gun is really good. Three shots, seven, three, two. Just great profile. All right. So we've seen the warriors already. They have a really nasty reanimation where they reanimate D6 instead of D3, and uh, they reanimate D3 plus three if they're within range of an objective marker as well. Uh, two OC is pretty good, and they can still go up to 20, which is lovely. I was terrified they would be brought back down to 10. Uh, and they hit on fours, but it seems like that's mainly a warrior thing because, for example, immortals hit on threes. It seems like the armory is still mostly a hitting on threes army outside of canoptic stuff and warriors. Um, immortals are T5 three wounds instead of T4, uh, or sorry, T5 three up save instead of T4 four up save. Um, the Goss Blaster seems to be very good now. Two shots at 5-1-1, flat out, no rapid fire with lethal hits is pretty good. Uh, Tesla is also very good. 5-0-1, two shots at 18 with assault and sustain hits two. Is, we put a lot of damage on some on some infantry. Uh, you also get to reroll a wound roll of one. Unless the enemy is on, within range of an objective marker, then it's full rerolls to wound. Um they also have two OC as well, and they can go to squads of 10 still. I think Immortals will be pretty solid. Uh, I think I would run them a good amount with the with Zeras for the most part as the battle line. Um, the reanimator here is uh, still got the problem of being really squishy. It does not have lone operative, unfortunately, uh, but there are a couple things to note about it. One, uh, it is T6, three up, three up save, six wounds. Uh, the Atomizer Beam is not terrible, surprisingly, uh, but it has a four up feel no pain, which is really good for keeping it alive. But more importantly, remember how we would need to see the enemy unit? You don't have to. While a friendly Necrons unit is within 12 of this model, each time that unit's reanimation protocols activate, this unit reanimates an additional D3 wounds. A couple things you should know here. While a friendly Necrons unit is within 12, not pick a unit, not see a unit. While a friendly unit is within 12, it's just there. Each time the, the unit's reanimation protocols activate, this unit reanimates an additional D3 wounds. Um, we're on page 45. Let's do this real quick. Your, units, your unit activates its reanimation protocols. Activates. 45. While from the units, each time all units reactivation protocols activate. Hey, you got shot at. You lost the score pack destroyer. You're within 12 inches of the reanimator. D3 plus three extra. No, 2D3, sorry. 2D3, maybe even plus one. 2D3 plus one uh, wounds come back. I mean, come on now. That's some spicy stuff. A 24-inch aura of doubling your reanimation protocols. Only problem is this guy can be shot. But honestly, put him behind a ruin, you might be fine. 12-inch aura is wide. It's pretty cool, right? It's pretty fun. Yeah, and you stop an overlord. Might well be done. Free stratagem. Two, you can do it twice. Ah. All right. Um... Hexmark. Oh, Hexmark is fun. All right, so it's got lone operative, of course. 18-inch uh, range pistols, six shots at 622 with precision, so that's nice. Uh, but it gets to use Fire Overwatch for free. Remember, Fire Overwatch can be used when an enemy mo unit moves within 24 inches of you in the shooting phase. However, he only has 18-inch range, so there is that. But when you Fire Overwatch, you hit on twos. So basically, you just every time you can... You'll just use Fire Overwatch every single time you can with the hex mark if they are within 18. But he's got lone operative, so he can't be shot unless you're within 12. Also, he has that ability where if you shoot at a Necrons unit within three inches of the model, he can just shoot it. So put him next to a whole bunch of Necrons, fire at them, and watch the hex mark as long as they're within 18 inches. Just start blasting. It's a bit iffy. I don't know if it'll be particularly great, especially because 18 inch range, but it might. It certainly might. He's going to start blasting you. Also, could you imagine blasting and then he shoots back and he kills your character? 
Spooky. All right, Lich Guard, T5, two wounds, three up save. Couple things to note here. If you take the shield, you get a four up invul. No more two up saves with Lich Guard. I don't remember if they had, I thought they had two up saves with the dispersion shield, I think, or at least it was plus one to the save. Uh, however, something that I think is more important, while a noble is leading this unit, you get minus one to wound. I'll take the minus one to wound over the uh, over the two up save. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at least most of the time. Lethal hits might be a problem. but uh, And then your weapons are either the war scythe with two attacks at 832 or the sword at uh, three attacks at 621. Um, personally, if I was leading, I think I would go with the sword and the shield because someone like Zandrek could maybe give them devastating wounds or other kinds of possibilities. Uh, but notice again, they're hitting on threes, not fours, as was uh, you know not a four-up army as we're initially uh, uh, talking about. But for the most part, um, you know they're just like a tanky, tough unit of well, infantry that can go from five to ten and can be somewhat decent by minus one to wound and get a four-up interval and be used to keep your guys alive, and they can regenerate a lot easier now thanks to the way uh, the re animation protocols work. So, Nito. Death Marks, same uh, profile as the Immortals. They, their gun is pretty good. They hit on threes, 5-2-2, two, two, but it's heavy and precision with a solid range. So, with the way that the overall AP and stuff goes, I like this. I think you can actually put a lot of really good hurt on various characters. Also, once per turn in the reinforcements of your opponent's movement phase, enemy is set in the battlefield within 18 inches of and visible to this unit, they may shoot that unit. Um, so this allows you to fire at people coming in from reserves within 18. So it's like a nice little deterrent. Just kind of, you know, keep them off your ass. So it can be handy. It goes from 5 to 10 as well. Flayed Ones. So Flayed Ones have stealth, which is cool. Might as well hit at range. Uh, their weapons are pretty good at murdering all kinds of infantry. Four attacks each at 411 with sustained hits and twin linked. I will say it's kind of funny here. While this model is makes a melee attack, if the target of that attack is below half strength, a hit roll scores a critical. So, so long as you hit, it counts as sustained hits one, which will make you put out a, a pretty ungodly amount of hits. Um, it'll probably be like five hits per guy, five hits per guy. So, um, you could probably rip pretty hard. I, I'm actually a little bit shocked. There's no battle shock. Eh, shocked. There's no battle shock thing here, but overall, I mean, you know, they're, they're pretty, they're going to do what they do best, which is run up and murder infantry. Crypto thralls. Um, they're T4 to two wounds for the most part. They have a really good feel, no pain, and they can fight on death, which is also very fun. And basically, you can put between uh, just two of them, and you can stick them in a unit that has a crypt deck in it as well to give them a four field of pain, you know, help them against precision rules and stuff like that. Um, Thank you, little bastards, I must say. Also, you know, not the worst melee profile ever. All right, Scorpex. Scorpex. So they're T6 now instead of T5. Makes a lot of sense, I'd say. Keeps three wounds and the three up save. Uh, they can ignore all modifiers to their weapon skill characteristic or hit roll. So they're just really, really good at doing exactly what you want them to. And they have four attacks at 7-2-2. Two, two. So they're really meant to butcher elite infantry more than anything. However, the Plasma Sight allows you to once per battle activate it and then give the entire unit devastating wounds. Which I think will allow you to do a lot more against things like tanks. But also, again, with that speaking hiccups, I don't know what it is. But uh, also, importantly, it doesn't kill one of your guys anymore, which is very, very nice. And But it says for every three models, you're going to have one plasma site. So you can actually take two plasma sites uh, if you wanted to for a squad of six, which I think is actually really, really decent. Gets a lot of good devastating wounds out that way. Uh, the Triarch Stalker is rather interesting. Uh, whatever you shoot removes cover, just doesn't get the benefit of cover whatsoever. Uh, but also, I'd say that he's got, you know, not a terrible looking profile. You know, T8, 12 wounds with a four up invul, which I don't think he had before, or at least it was, maybe he did. Maybe it was quantum shielding. Um, but T8's pretty good. The heat ray is actually quite solid too. It's got Melta 4, which is, you know, this thing gets close. That's actually really gross but 
You can replace it with either a particle shredder, which hits on twos, or the twin heavy Gauss cannon, which is, you know, fine. Lethal hits, twin linked, it's, it's all right. Um, I gotta be honest, I, think, I like the heat ray. I like the heat ray a lot. I think it can actually blast people pretty well and uh, when you roll up. And, you know, it's got a little bit of melee going on. I don't know if it'll really be worth taking. Removing cover is is definitely helpful, but I would prefer maybe, like, reroll ones to wound or, or reroll ones to hit instead. But cover is pretty good. Okay, let's talk about the Catan. I think the Catan are really, really good. Like, I think they bust. They bust everywhere. So they all have the same stat line for the most part. It is a is T11 with 12 wounds and a 4-up save with a 4-up invul. Yeah, they all have the exact same stat line. Um, they also have the exact same stat line of minus damage. Have the damage. So one, they're as tanky as a, a tank. They've got 12 wounds. Uh, I know the Deceiver has stealth, so he gets minus one to hit. Um, and they have a four-up invul and have the damage. Now, there are a couple possible issues with them, which is lethal hits, I think, will really hurt them because the saves they get are not great against it. And if you just spam lethal hits one damage against them, I think that actually might be a genuine problem. Uh, however... Even with that, their profile for the most part is pretty darn good, and they actually just do a lot of damage. Uh, Cosmic Insanity is a kind of simple, devastating wounds, but anti-character precision ability to try to just bop out a character. Um, but you also get a redeploy if you're using the Deceiver. But the Deceiver's got eight attacks at 8-3-3. Like, he kind of punches, you know? He kind of punches somewhat decently in combat. Um, the redeploy... Depends on how good that'll be. We'll see. But it could be useful. Um, but, you know, he, he actually kind of punches. You know who punches, though? The Nightbringer. The Nightbringer has, at the end of the fight phase, roll a D6 for every enemy unit within six, and on a four, they take D3 mortals every time, which will really add up to quite a bit of mortals. Gaze of Death is just a D3 shots, 12, 2, D6, plus 3, like... A tank killer. Not that many shots, but still, like, a genuine tank ripper. Maybe the AP could be a little bit higher, though, but the damage is super high. And the Nightbringer's actual weapons, strength 14, AP 4, D6 damage with devastating wounds, or 14 attacks at 8-2-2. Like, a genuinely really good profile. Like this, this will kill an entire squad of Marines just outright. Um, this will put on ungodly amounts of damage to anything big. Huge AP, great damage, and dev wounds. Plus the drain life at the end, you know, to, to add even more mortals at the end. Like, and this gun, it's really solid. Speaking of solid, I think my favorite one might be the Void Dragon. The Void Dragon has his spear, which is a, a fun little anti-vehicle throw, but Voltaic Storm is sustain hits two, blast, D6 plus three at 712. Like, that is a lot of shots, a great chance of getting more shots, and more shots if blast, and a good, like, anti-elite slash infantry profile. Then his actual melee has a good sweep, a good regular vehicle attack, six extra attacks with his blades, and... You can suck off vehicles. You can just suck them off. You know, you on a two-up, you do D3 mortals to a vehicle, and you regen that many wounds. Not to mention, let's not forget, all of these guys regenerate D3 wounds at the end thanks to reanimation protocols. And honestly, and, and I think you can heal them with Technomancers with, for more wounds. Like... I, I really think that these Voyage, uh, that these Catan are are pretty good. They they have swapped their good m random not psychic power mortal wounds for genuinely high damage across the board and a pretty tanky profile. Uh, and then the Transcendent Catan has the Seismic Assault, which is you know pretty good. Crackling Tendrils actually, he hits harder than the, than the uh, he hits harder than Mister. Deceiver 
eight attacks at nine, three D six sustained hits. And each time this model is like to advance, you can move in the battlefield and set it up again. So you can just kind of bounce around the place every time he advances and he can advance and shoot because of the assault weapon. The Kata this, the transcendent one isn't quite as exciting to me as the rest, but, uh, uh, but even so also, you know, big deadly demise kind of fun to explode on a D six. I gotta say the Katana looking really good. Very tough, decent wounds, have damage, good invul. Only problem I can see is low is low damage lethal hits. Besides that, though, love it. All right. Canoptic spiders. So spiders are interesting. I thought they would actually lead scarab swarms. Uh, and I'm a little sad that they don't. But the scarab swarms got a pretty fun glow up that I like a lot. Well, they were all, always good, but they, they have a new thing. So spiders are actually not bad. They're T7 and they have six wounds, which is a fine enough profile. Um, but their particle beamer is also kind of fun, you know, decent like little chip damage. And they actually hit all right in melee. They're hitting on fours isn't great, but that profile is pretty good. What's interesting is that they can create an aura of four up field no pain against psychic with a gloom prism. The Fabricator Claw Array has a six-inch aura of feel no pain for vehicles. Unfortunately, these guys are monsters. But at the end, if you have, it says in the command phase, like one friendly scarab swarm within six inches of this unit, one destroyed model is returned for each spider because you can take a unit of two. So two spiders regenerating two scarabs eh, might be pretty good. It's actually, it could be far better when you see what scarabs do. It depends on how, how these guys have notoriously been a bit overpriced, so we'll see. Um, we'll, but scarabs move nine have only two wounds, uh, two toughness now. They're really bad in terms of toughness. Terrible save, but four wounds total. They don't hold objectives anymore either. But each scarab between three to six. Oh, yeah, they can't go to nine anymore. That's unfortunate. I forgot about that. They can't go to nine. Um, but the, the, I think the scarabs have a different point now. I like the Scarabs. Uh, they have lethal hits on their mandibles, and they have six attacks each on a five up hitting with strength two. So in reality, you're really just aiming for sixes, but that means you'll get at least one lethal hit for every single guy, which actually might stack a couple saves on. Uh, but it's this ability right here, self-destruction. Also, they have Deadly Demise 1, which is hilarious. So every time you kill a Scarab, you roll a six, and on a six, they, take, they do a mortal within, isn't it six inches? I'll double check. Um, but at the start of the fight phase, you can basically blow up a Scarum. And on a two through three, they take a D3 mortals. And on a six, they take D3 plus three mortals. Add one to the result if it's a vehicle. I got to be honest. I like this a lot. It's just a great way to send Scarabs at your opponent. And just blow them up in their face and do a bunch of mortals. You know? Especially against vehicles where it's automatic and possibly even way stronger. And then you can reanimate them with the, the spiders if you feel like it. Also, if you're within engagement range of an enemy unit, you subtract one from their objective control characteristic. Unfortunately, it's just to a minimum of one, but even so. So you can you use scarabs not as like your giant force, but as little supplementary tools here and there to cause problems, annoy people, and do damage. Um, so I kind of like that overall, you know, you might get a couple lethal hits in, you might blow up and do a little bit of mortals and you might blow up and do a lot of bit of mortals. So I don't know. I like them. I, I know people are going to be sad that you can't run like 27 scarabs anymore, but, um, you know, you can still run 18, which is fine. Uh, Ophidians. Ophidians have a different kind of attack now. Uh, they are definitely more of a anti-middle ground elite, uh, and they're using their faster movements to kind of like make, make up for that, so to speak, and their deep strike. Um, also, you can do that thing where you can remove them and place them back up on the battlefield, uh, and then also get the devastating wounds with the plasma site, as it is before. Um, as far as I'm concerned, these guys are just flat out inferior to the Scorpex, which is making me wonder if you're going to use them more for their maneuverability or instead if you're going to use them because I don't think anything can actually be attached to them like at all. So I feel like either that or they'll just be pointed cheaper. You know, they'll either just be flat out cheaper or they are meant to be more bouncing around people. I, I would hope that they're cheaper. Tomb Blades. So Tomb Blades are interesting. They got the Particle Beamer, which actually, with that Devastating Wounds, might see a glow up. 
Um, the twin Tesla Carbine, twin Gospel, like all these kinds of jazz here. T5, two wounds, 12-inch move. They have Scouts 9, which is nice. You know, keeps them moving up and out there. And then Myers want to hit on them. And then all of their wacky stuff either gives them a 3-up save, 5-up invul, or ignores cover. Tomb Blades, for me, uh, they, they've always been the kind of unit that flies up, does some damage, and kind of annoys you for the most part, or takes early objectives. That's kind of what I would use with them still. Um, that's, yeah, that's just generally my option. Okay, Triag Praetorians have always been one of my more favorite units. I've always just loved this, this unit in general. I thought it was a lot, a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I, I gotta say, I think they might stick around with that. So, you either pick the Raw of the Covenant, or the Particle Caster and Void Blade. Um, the Particle Caster and Void Blade definitely are, you know, extra attack, but less damage. But you also get three shots with Devastating Wounds on a pistol, hitting on twos, mind you. Whereas the Rod of the Covenant is also very good, but it's more like a lot more anti-elite. You know, one shot at 5-2-2, two, two, three attacks at 5-2-2. Two, two. Um, I actually might take the Blade and, and Pistol, that, those extra devastating wounds, I think, might be really, really good. Also, you can reroll charge rolls for this unit and is able to declare a charge in a turn which it fell back. So they can just really get in there, cause issues. Good squad size, Lich Guard profile. I might actually take them with some devastating wounds, just you know, pop a couple of mortal wounds off on them. And also do just genuine damage against regular uh, chaff infantry. Also, they did hit on twos. I don't know why that is, but they hit on twos. That's awesome. Wraiths. Uh, they have that thing where when you fly over them, they do mortals. Um, rates look all right. Uh, whip coils are definitely anti-horde. Vicious claws, anti-elite. You know, the beamer has one shop really good, but it's also unreliable. Hits on fours. The particle caster, though, much like the, the Praetorians, hits on twos. Um, but it has devastating wounds and three shots. And so it's like, ah, you might just want to spam that. Their T6 now, which is kind of cool, but they kept their invul, which is also kind of cool. They're a little slower, though. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Wraiths. They could be good. I'm not sure. I'm a little iffy on them. Depends on the points. Okay. Let's get into vehicles, because this is actually rather interesting. Um, so a lot of the vehicles just flat out have four-up invuls, I think, to make up for quantum shielding. Uh, vehicles in this edition don't have invuls. Like, none of them. They just don't have invuls. And so I think that um, they are making up for it by using this invulnerable save as a way to kind of give them the quantum shielding ability. Um, what's interesting about the Annihilation Barge is they have the Gauss Cannon, the Twin Tesla Destructor, right? Or they can replace the Gauss Cannon with Tesla Cannon. The Twin Tesla Destructor is twin-linked and has good sustained hits. So, and also being two damage might put a good amount of hit on like weird profiles, things like Harlequins and stuff, uh, or Demons. But the Gauss Cannon, you know, I think these are both decently useful. Depends on what you want to fire it at. The rule is a little bit bizarre. In your shooting phase, each time you set a target for the smallest twin Tesla Destructor, roll 1d6 for the target unit and 1d6 for every enemy unit within three on the target unit. On a five up, the unit being rolled for is struck by arcing en energies. After resolving all the smallest attacks against the target unit, they take d3 mortals. So you're basically doing the old stratagem where when you fire at something, you roll a five up on that unit and everything around it, and then it goes, zzz, 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 they take a bunch of mortals. Um, it's kind of a wacky thing. It, it, it disincentivizes bunching up, but on a five up, that's not great. Uh, I do like that you roll for the thing you actually shot, and it is free in a sense. Like you just get it, no stratagem required. Um, but it is a little bit like three. Well, well, okay. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. Three inches from the target unit is actually not that bad because it's the target unit. You know, if you fire this at, at a giant squad of, say, orc boys, it's everything three inches next to, like, a gigantic blob of boys. So that might be handy. It really depends on what you're firing. Against knights, it's worthless. Against horde, maybe. All right. Uh, we've already seen the Doomsday Arc for the most part. Um, the Goss, uh, two Goss Flayer arrays is actually... A lot of shots. It's 10 shots or 20 shots within half. Um, the Doomsday Cannon is pretty darn good. Hits a lot better. No longer very casino-y. Four up invul, as I've mentioned. The Doomsday Arc, for the most part, looks like it's actually going to live up to its name as being a proper anti-tank weapon. Uh, or just anti-mega elite weapon. Uh, Locust Destroyers. 
So remember what I mentioned about critical hits? Goss cannons do, in fact, have lethal hits. So the Locust Lord in this squad will give them auto wounding on five ups with the Goss cannon, uh, which with three shots each, at T6, three ups, and rerolling a hit roll of one against the closest eligible target. Uh, yeah, that's going to hurt really bad, I'd say. Uh, really bad. Gen like that's, that's genuinely pretty good. And you can go all the way up from one to six. Like, uh, that's pretty good. Speaking of Locust, Locust Heavy. Uh, each time this model unit makes an attack with its Enmetic Exterminator against an infantry, we roll a wound roll of one. Or the big one against monster and vehicle, we roll a wound roll of one. So these chunky boys are T6 with four wounds. And the Enmetic Exterminator is a interesting one. It's heavy. And they're both heavy, so they, you know, plus one ahead, they don't move. But it's rapid fire six and sustain hits one. Before, you would never take the Enmetic Exterminator because why would you need more anti-infantry? You're playing Necrons, for God's sakes. But I won't lie, this, this is a lot of anti-infantry. Like, it's an 18-inch range, rapid, like, 12 shots at 611 with sustained hits. That's a lot. That's a lot. And if they're, they're one through three units, like, two of them will probably wipe any Guardsman squad. Just, just gone. Same thing with Eldar and stuff. Uh, but let's be honest, that Goss Destructor, though, strength 14, AP 4, damage flat 6. I mean, I mean, come on now. That's fire that at a vehicle. I mean, come on now. That's some shots right there. That's some shots. That's some shots, all right. That'll put the hurt off or on. Okay, my beloved Doomstalker. I have three of you. My beloved Doomstalker. The Doomsday Blasta is a D6 plus 1, 14, 3, 3. It hits on 4s, though, still, and which is really unfortunate, but it is heavy, so it can hit on 3s if they're just stationary, uh, which is fine. It also has blasts, which is nice for non-vehicles, uh, but it seems like it's not meant to be a gigantic anti-tank role anymore, but rather a anti-hyper-elite, I guess? Um, like, like custodians, this is a really good, uh, profile for custodians or terminators, things like that. You know, uh, also you can use overwatch on him on a five up. I would have preferred getting the free overwatch like, um, the other guy, like the hex mark, but a five up, I guess, isn't that bad. Um, it, it works out or, or maybe like shoot back against an enemy that gets shot Something like that felt a little bit more, I don't know, expected for the Doomstalker. Um, but eh, I guess it's fine. Um, it's all right. It, it, it's it's not great. The profile is decent, but I, it depends on the points cost. I'm hoping it'll be cheaper than the Doomsday Arc for the most part. Uh, and if it is, then I'm, I'm going to take a lot of them because they're fun. All right. Ghost Arc, you don't care about any of this stuff. You care about the rule. Once per phase, just after an enemy unit finishes making his attacks, if one or more friendly Necron units within three inches of the model has lost any of them, this model can use its ability. If it does, select one of the Necron Warriors units. That unit's reanimation protocols activate. Basically, the whole idea now is that the Ghost Arc is old reanimation. After the, uh, instead of waiting to the command phase, after the enemy unit uses its attacks, you rebuild Warriors immediately. Don't forget, though, Warriors regenerate D6 or on an objective D3 plus three. Now it's only once per phase, but that alone I think is really good. Also, I'm assuming it's a transport, yeah? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it's only 10 warriors, uh, so you can't put in 20 warriors, but I, I get it. Um, I wish it was open topped, like firing deck four or something like that, kind of fun. Um, so I would say, I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine if uh, you had a canoptic reanimator next to the warriors and you revived warriors and then use the stratagem for another D three, maybe plus one. And then you use the ghost arc or the, the, the ghost arc for another. So it's, it's no God. It's, it's, um, D six plus D three plus one plus D three two D three plus one plus D six or whatever the hell it is. I, I, might, I might have that wrong. I might be getting it wrong, but I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. 
also a good profile too. Like, you know, T9, 14 wounds, four up invul, like that, that, that's a lot. Okay, the Flyers, the Flyers. So the Doom Scythe is interesting. The heavy death ray is really impressive. Three shots at 16-4, D6 plus one with sustain hits D3 is a really scary profile. Much like the monolith, that thing will either just crumple you or or just or do, you know, not a whole lot. Um, Twin Dust of the Destructor, kind of a similar thing with sustain hits too. The at atavistic investigation is weird. It says, targets an enemy infantry unit with its heavy death ray. Your opponent must declare that you will stand firm or duct for cover. If it stands firm, when resolving attacks against that unit with the weapon that phase, successful hit, unfortified hit roll of five scores, a critical hit. So the infantry, you know, getting sustained hits pretty crazy with five ups. Or if it ducks for cover until the start of your next shooting phase, they must take minus one to hit. So either suffer the insane high damage of the death ray or reduce your power. Um, the Night Scythe, though, is something that's also rather interesting. It says, at the end of the fight phase, if there are no models currently embarked within this transport, you can select one friendly Necron's infantry unit wholly within six inches of this transport. Unless that unit is within engaged range, it may embark. So it allows you to embark into the transport at the end of the fight phase to kind of allow them to get back up. Then it's then you move or something, then you drop them back off again. Um, and it allows it to transport one Necron infantry unit, just unit, 20 warriors, three Scorpex, one unit, which I think is kind of a, a nice like in between. I actually haven't read on the obelisk. It's always so bad that I never really looked at it. So it's got four Tesla spheres, six shots, 701, sustain hits two, anti fly four up, T14, 22 wounds, ah, blah, blah, blah. At the start of your opponent's movement phase, you can select one enemy with an 18 inches of visible model. At the end of the phase, track two from the movement characteristic and advance a charge. If the unit has fly, until the start of your next movement phase, roll 1d6. Each time this unit ends any type of move on a 4-up, it suffers d3 mortals. I mean, I just don't care. I care about this, though. I care about the Tesseract Vault. So it also has four Tesla Spheres as well. It's got a 4-up invul, 2-up save, T12, and 24 wounds, which is pretty insane. And it has the Catan Powers, though. So when you're shooting phase, when this model is selected to shoot, you can first select one of the Catan powers. This model is equipped with that weapon in addition to the other weapons. So it gains whatever power you'd like. Times Arrow is, is a six mortal wounds, anti-character, four up, devastating wounds precision. It's basically you, character. I'm going to try to do six mortals to you. Deal with this and just delete you from existence. Um, Cosmic Fire, which is a just a gigantic flamer, an insanity level flamer with mortals as well, 3d6 shots, or Antimatter Meteor, which is an anti-elite thing. So it's snipe a character, burn an infantry unit to the ground, or do a ton of damage against either probably tanks or hyper-elite infantry. All of them, very funny. Also, Indirect Fire, which is fun and silly. Um... Also, four Tesla Spheres, you know, that's like 24 extra shots against infantry. Like, this guy's got some actual, actual hit. He's got some genuine hit. Um, we've seen the Monolith already. Uh, the Monolith has a very good profile. I think it hits extremely hard um, for its actual weapons. No invul, though, which is unfortunate. But um, uh, we'll see how it turns out. It's a big model, so. And then last but not least, let's talk. Oh, wait, no, there's Convergence of Dominion. I'm going to read this real fast. Um, yeah, the three spheres. So it's got, what is it? Three shots each, four, six, oh, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, friendly, Necrons, you with the fortification. Each time that unit's reanimation protocol is activated, you can re-roll the dice rolled. And you can give cover. It's pretty good. I like that. And it's got to be set up within 12 inches of each other, which is not that bad. All right, Zarek. I actually haven't read The Silent King yet. I haven't read what Zarek does. So... This is the one I was saving. <sighs> Zarek and his triarchal maneers. So he has a four up invul, of course. T10, two up save, 16 wounds. I don't think he had two up save before. I think he had three up. So 16 wounds and then five wounds for each of his maneers. So he's about the same in terms of health. Uh, slightly better on that and slightly tougher, but also not really because things have changed. He has, uh, what was it? One and the two. Must be your warlord. Yeah, okay, the Trump Manier things. 
And at the end, at the start, at the start of the battle round, select one of the tribe's abilities. They get it. Makes sense. Once per turn, at the end of your command phase, you can select one friendly battle shocked model within twelve. That unit is no longer battle shocked. So it stops battle shock, which is handy because it seems like Necrons are shockingly susceptible to it. Uh, and then you get one of the three abilities. First, let's go with the weapons. So both of the Meneers have the, the Annihilator Beam, which is 24-inch range, hits strength 14, 4s, and 6. So the Meneers still hit really, really hard. They still break apart things at a uh, solid rate. Um, they, they, they do the murder. They certainly do the murder for the most part. Um, then he also has his Scepter of Eternal Glory, which is his main staff, which is two more shots at 10 3, 3 with Devastating Wounds, which is always handy to have. And then I'm a, he has his Staff of Stars, which is his uh, other boy's little ability, which is 12 shots at 6 one one with Indirect Fire. Why? I don't know, but that's cool, I guess. He just has it. Uh, and then you can, you can fire out somewhere else. Maybe it's because it's the Staff of Stars and it comes down. Who knows? Um, but it, for the most part, it's pretty good. The profile, you know, good anti-tank, some anti-elite, and a lot of anti-horde. As for his melee, however, his Scythe of Dust is a 12 attacks at hitting on to an 832, which is a lot of attacks at a very good profile, and two funny maneers going bonk, which is hilarious. Um, so he's still pretty killy. You know, he shoots well and he stabs well, but he has his three abilities. The first one is within six inches of Zarek. They make a ranged attack, reroll, hit roll of one, and a wound roll of one, which will be really good for himself as well, because he also gets those, uh, especially when he's hitting on twos. The other one is six inches around Zarek. You can reroll charge rolls, um, which is pretty good. You know, fair on the blades, fair on the stars. I guess it's a. Uh, a fine way to get a lot of people in if you're running like a more melee heavy Krons army. Also, because it's a friendly Necrons unit, you know, so everything uh, scarabs, uh, wraiths, etc. And finer, bringer of unity. Within six inches of this unit's Zarek model, you can ignore any or all modifiers to the characteristic of models in that unit and to any roll or test for that unit. So, no more minuses one to hit, no more minuses to wound, no more minuses to leadership. No more something, you know, my battle shock test thing or thing of a jig. None. No more minuses to move in general. All of that, which I think is really cool. I like the name of it, Bringer of Unity. All things considered, um, I think Zarek is going to be pretty darn good. He can make a great gun battle line. He can get you into combat well, and he can just ignore any of the problems that come your way. And uh, yeah. And then you also turn off Battle Shock once per turn, which I think is just really good. Uh, it's also the end of your command phase, which means I think you roll for the Battle Shock. If you do get Battle Shocked, he can then turn off the Battle Shock just right there. So that might be really handy at flipping objectives and stuff. Um, yeah, so like I said, guys, I, I think the Necron, the, the Doom saying is, was under, is not representative. I really don't think so. I think, I know I'm Mr. Optimism. I know I'm Mr. Like, uh, happy-go-lucky, but I gotta say, like, you know, maybe the Scarabs is a bit of a sad drop. Ophidians are looking a little bit meh. Uh, don't know about spiders. Um, the Catan, I think, are looking really good. I think the characters look really, really good, too. A lot of the name characters look good. Uh, the reanimation ability of the named characters is also kind of crazy. Uh, Zeraz is a goddamn beast. Um, your stratagems are good. Your enhancements are a little meh for the most part. I, I will say your enhancements are a little me mediocre. Um, but I, I gotta be honest. And you know, you're, you're putting character units, like even if they're just cryptex or something, in immortal squads, all your immortals are hitting on twos now. Your Scorpex are hitting on twos now with these kinds of guys. Like, I gotta say, I, I'm not, I don't have the doom saying. I think the Necrons are looking pretty nasty. Now, of course, points, always points. We never know points. and The game will never matter until points, but eh, eh, maybe. I don't know. 
I, maybe I'm just the weird one, but I think you'll be okay. All right. Um, I know it's taking me a while to get a lot of these out, but uh, I'll try to hop back up with Votan. <laughs> I was going to make this video faster or whatever. It really just ran through. It's still an hour long. God damn it. Votan will be next because I play Votan as well. So Votan will be next.